Hello everybody and welcome to this video. We're going to take a look at the different updates to Google Sheets new table options. So there's a lot of changes since I put my first video out on tables and I just wanted to kind of address those. Now there is the link on Google Workspaces updates, which is their blog that talks about all sorts of different new products and updates and features. I'm going to kind of consolidate it in here and it's specifically the Google Sheets tables. And in that you can go to that and check it out if you want to read it by yourself on your own. Otherwise, I kind of consolidated it here in this um, video. And over here, I'm just going to select each one of these and it'll show the updates and some notes and I'll kind of quickly show them too. So the first one was hotkeys. They made hotkeys control alt T, which I assume for tables. And you can select a range and then control alt T or command option T for Mac and it'll create a new structured table directly in there. And that can be useful if you're, you know, constantly making new ones instead of going and selecting a range, highlighting, right clicking, and then finding the convert to table or going to the format convert to table. Hotkeys are kind of the way to go. So I'm just doing control Z to undo. The next one is that you can add rows and columns with the plus button. So maybe over here you have one that's missing or you need to do something. If you go in there, you can actually see this plus button on the left side. And if you click it, it'll add an additional row. And so as you do that, you can then, you know, type in and work on those rows. And you may have noticed over on this side, when I add a row here, it's not actually changing any of the rows in the whole spreadsheet. It is just moving everything else down one. And so that is helpful to note when you add the rows that it just kind of formats it down lower and pushes everything. So I'm just going to do undo, undo to remove those. The next one too is if you're on the right side, there's going to be a insert column. So you can do that to insert a column only on that side. When you do that, it'll just kind of take over the next one. And here you can see I can't push it because, oh, actually I can. Let's see. I had this hidden. Let's see if I can keep going. Yeah, it'll stop there. I was going to say you can't make it overwrite another table. So I'm just going to do control Z, back this up because I don't want that over on that side. If you do want to add one into the middle or on another area, you'll have to go in and right click and then either insert a table column. And again, that's making that, if you look over here, you can see that it's, it just moved it over to the H. And I'm just gonna put control Z to undo there. And now we're back to where we were. So it is helpful. The next one is referencing only data without the header. So what I mean by that, in the previous one, there was only this hashtag all in it, which includes the header. So if you do equal table name, so let's say the new updates, and then if I specify all, that's going to show all of it. Now I have to put these in arrays in order for it to spill. You can see here all of the things that are shown there. If I go and remove this all in the brackets and just do new updates, hit enter. Now I don't have the header row. And that seems like a small thing or like, why would you want that? And it is very useful if you're trying to reference the whole table and you're trying to either filter it down or do something there. Initially, you had to add a top row specifically with the filter function in order for them to be equal. The all table versus um, just one of the rows saying like, I only want to filter out true from this, you wouldn't really be able to with the all because it would be, you know, this entire one. Whereas if you just do one of these specific, um, like the show and push enter, you're just going to see this meaning the show here. So filter would now work with this, which is very helpful. The next one is to set the column type. So this automatically sets the column types when converting a range to the table. It's not that big of a change, but it can be helpful. So let's say that you have this, and I'm just going to turn this to unformatted data. And then when I convert it to a table, it'll automatically see this is in currency, this is a start date, 
and this is just text or it's just leaving it blank. So before you'd have to switch and turn it, but now it is able to recognize if it is in the currency, you know, if it's a calendar event or whatever it is. So, you know, it's not that big of a change, but good to know. The next one is dragging values down. So as you go through, it'll actually expand those automatically. So let's say we go to the bottom of this data set and here I just kind of continue this down. You can see that it'll continue what these employee ID are as I go through here. And so again, it's not that big of a change, but it's nice that you're able to do that and still have it be in this structured table. If you have something too, like a drop down or check boxes, those would continue to go down as well. So as I drag this down, you can see the formula continues and the check boxes are there, as well as over here, this formula is continuing on too. So it is nice as you can just easily pull it down and just continue those patterns throughout the structured table. The next one is using spaces and that is going to be in the table names. So before you weren't able to use a space, but now you can, and you can see that there. The other aspect of that is that if you are referencing the table, so let's do the worker table, you can see that there is an underscore for the space. So while you reference it, it still has that underscore for that character, but it is nice if, especially for those of you who prefer to see it in like normal spelling versus the underscore. And the next one, which I'm most excited for, is the import range actually works now with tables. So instead of using the actual cells and having to, you know, decide where that is, now you're able to use import range with that table name. It's going to be the hashtag all if you want the entire table, or if you just want the data, hashtag data for that. Now, I'll go ahead and show with this one, what you have to do is take the spreadsheet URL up to where it says edit. So just this here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to full screen and go to this import. I'm just going to go ahead and start import range. I'm going to use a couple of quotation marks and paste in that link. Then the range string. So that's where I can say what the table is. And then I'll just start with all. So it'll be worker table. And then hashtag all, and then enter. If it's the first time you use it, it might give you a warning that you have to approve it, but here it is. This is the table, and here we can see that those ones are there. I'm just gonna go ahead and update it quick, and then see, so maybe I'll add a couple more ranges down here. So, let's go to that. I don't, I'm not gonna add anything else. Go back here and you can see it is updated with those latest ones, which is super, super helpful. So I'm just gonna select all of this and copy it. Let's go ahead and do the data. So if you paste this in and then use data, then, oh, can't find the range or sheet. Maybe it's lowercase data. No, here, let me look at this. Um, table one, data, huh. I wonder if they switched it to just the table like it's normally is. Uh, yeah, oh, okay. Well, it looks like their blog post is wrong. Apologies on that. Should have maybe double checked that before I made the video. In any case, so you can just use the table name and that'll get the data without the header. So, you know, again, it's totally up to you which way you want to go. The next thing is you can use this for different ones. So if you want to have like department, you can use that, oops, and it will bring up the department only or whichever one that you want or ones. So, you know, again, it works just like you would to reference the table from the same spreadsheet, which is super helpful. It's nice that it'll automatically update those. And one thing to note too, these ones are blank. So using that there will have issues, but here, this is right where the row should stop. It'll be fine. So, you know, 
it'll just continue to grow with the table so you don't ever have to change this range. Now, one thing I just wanted to mess around with and I thought would be kind of interesting is being able to use the multiple selections with dot drop downs, which is a newer feature with this. So one thing you could make here, and I'm not gonna go through this, but you can actually create a formula that allows you to select specific columns. So maybe you want employee IDs, name, and email only. There we have those data. Or maybe you just want names and then the departments. No employee IDs. You can do that too. Or you just want to see department and salaries. You can do that. Now one thing to note with this build here is let's say that you have it like this you will have to specify what you want the currency to be. So you'd have to go into here, format, and then change it to a currency. Then let's say that you remove the salary and then you switch to start date instead. You'll see that these are all going to be formatted as money when this should be a date. So you would have to change it. There isn't really a way, at least from what I built here in the example to do that. You might be able to get away with adding kind of another if condition, like if it's the salary, then have it formatted in this specific way. But in any case, I just wanted it this for now, but just wanted to, to show it just in case that's something someone wanted. So it's kind of a nice, neat way to use these newer features here. So anyway, I'm going to go back to the main one. And again, this is probably my favorite update. Uh, another one I wanted to cover is the conditional notifications, and they've gotten a lot easier and a lot better. This is a workspace required feature, so make sure that you have that for this to work. Otherwise, this might not be, you know, pertain to your instance if you just have a free Google account. Here is a conditional notifications table. I have it kind of set up as like technicians with different issues, and then on the status, I have different ones, and I want it once when it's assigned that it sends an email to that technician. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a rule, and we'll just say assigned email, and I want it if the value changes in this table, and this is what's kind of new. You weren't able to do that. It used to be you have to select a range, and it was kind of like column B, C, D, E, H kind of thing. So now you can say when the status changes, and meets this condition. And we can say text is exactly assigned in the column status. Then send an email, and you can optionally manually type the email or have it be in a column, which is technicians. Hit save, and here it's just a lot easier to read like table one status and send it to technician. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try assigning a couple to my email here. Now it does say that it groups them. So in theory, we would get one email for this and sometimes it takes 30 minutes or so. So it does take a little bit longer. I think I would like to use it more if it was like pretty instantaneous. That said, it is a lot easier to set up and it seems like it's just less buggy where it used to sometimes just not work. All right, so I gave it a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and look at the trigger history and it did successfully go through and send the email. So again, the, the main thing here is that you can now use tables for that. In their blog post there actually had um, like the conditional notifications showing here. And I think there's actually an icon that'll come up and um, go onto your table as well. So there'll be a little bit more, but in any case, that's there. The email is pretty much all the same. Uh, if you want to check out kind of that whole aspect of it, you can go to my other video of conditional notifications. I'll try to link it here, but in any case, it's uh, a lot easier now. So I, so I recommend using them. And the last one that we want to look at is created tables with Gemini. Now, in this, this announcement was for later in October, so it's not quite there yet, but it's that you can actually create structured tables through it. Now, I do have an account that has Gemini with it, and you can create tables. They're just not structured. So I can at least show you that, and, you know, we can go from there. It's 
you know, you can have something like this and pick some, or you can try entering a prompt. I might just do this call center. So create a tracker to manage a customer service call center. Um, you know, press enter, it'll start loading. Sometimes takes a bit. Here we go. So, you know, it, it has this one. And, you know, it's all kind of example stuff here, but then you can choose to enter it. So, again, it's not structured yet, but later on it will be, which can be helpful and can be a way to kind of quickly get a template and then, you know, kind of customize it and work from there because, you know, there's definitely some stuff that you could uh, you could do here, improve it. But, you know, another feature if you have Gemini with your account. That's all the, the main updates here. There's a lot of stuff that's out there and a couple of ones that, you know, if you have a workspace with certain um, options that can be either looking forward to or one that you could start using now. And ultimately, I think the tables have been a great addition to Google Sheets. And, you know, with anything, there's always some room for improvement. But honestly, in the last two months, I've been pretty impressed with the stuff that's already been added on. And unfortunately, there's still like app scripts don't reference tables, so we can't use that yet. I did at least try it a couple days ago and no luck, but hopefully that's on someone's list. And if it's not, and that's something you want, send feedback on it. And you know, if enough people are commenting on the same feature, hopefully that's something that actually gets added like all of these other ones that I've just showcased. So hopefully you find this helpful. Thank you for watching. Feel free to leave a comment on any of the things you're most excited for or something that you wish was added to these tables. I love to hear it. And, you know, again, probably more importantly, send that feedback to Google so they can actually program that in. So thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, do those YouTube things. And until the next one, bye now.